You may have heard about something called cold reading. It's a trick that magicians use in order to communicate with an audience member and think that they are psychic. Somebody sent me a video today saying that autistic children have telepathy. They do not, but it did get me reading on cognitive empathy, and this will not be pretty for me or anyone else, but let's talk about cognitive empathy. There are different kinds of empathy, one of which is the ability to understand what somebody else is feeling and thinking. Incidentally, this does tend to be quite low in those that are diagnosed autistic, but I am coming to believe that autism is not just one thing. It's a spectrum of behaviors that have all been put under one umbrella. Those who have very high cognitive empathy are often children who grew up with parents that were very unstable. You know that thing where just one little thing ends up setting off this chain of events and it doesn't end well? Those are going to be the kids who have to watch and be vigilant. What is somebody else feeling? What are they thinking? You're going to watch those little facial expressions and it's going to score you very high in understanding others. One might hope that that develops into being a caring person or having effective empathy where when you understand what someone else is feeling, you feel it too, but that's not always the case. In some individuals, having very high cognitive empathy can lead to them being very effective at being Machiavellian, or they might end up becoming a magician. This works when you start talking to someone, like mentioning a maternal figure, and you watch their facial expressions, and you start to roll with it. That could convince someone that you are actually psychic, but in fact, you are just watching people react. But let's come back to autism. There is no peer-reviewed research that would suggest that autistic people have any higher cognitive empathy than the general population. In fact, it's lower. I think what people might be seeing when they feel that their child can read their mind, that is your child. They have lived with you their entire life, especially if they're not verbal and they're not able to communicate well. They're going to develop ways to communicate with their parent and understand their parent. Interestingly, some newer research has come out that's found that autistic people generally have higher effective empathy. They feel what others are feeling and they feel it intensely and it is overwhelming. It has been suggested that having lower cognitive empathy is the defense mechanism. So long as they do not understand what others are feeling, it's a way to protect themselves from feeling what others are feeling. And I could see that as being a subconscious tool. On the other side of that spectrum, Children who have had really adverse experiences growing up may use cognitive empathy as a way to protect themselves. So long as you know what others are feeling, you can direct that situation away from being harmful. This group, those who have had early childhood trauma, also tend to be more empathetic across the board. That includes effective empathy. That includes reacting to other people's distress. There is a really interesting, more newer psychological research on this, and that's with those who have very high dark triad traits, so somebody who might be classed as a psychopath, but also has very high empathy, in particular cognitive empathy. I won't go into that because it is so new, and I think that it's just not yet understood. One of my great criticisms about psychology is the people who are studying it may not know what it is like to be in that head. As a result, all they can write is a reflection of case studies. If you do fall into one of these psychological categories, be it ADHD like me, or autism, or something else, you may be disturbed by how things are misrepresented in media, and even more disturbed by how they're misrepresented in science. Take empathy and autism, for example. Any thoughts on this? 